Welcome in. All right, so here's a, a test for you for grade 11 students on circuits. Now you you may be you know taking a different course as well. Um, I hope that you can take advantage of of this particular um, test here for you. So there's some multiple choice questions, and then there are some questions which are calculation questions. So I'm going to try to um, go over the entire thing. And as usual with these tests, I'll put up a link. Okay, so it's free to download. You can use it, learn from it. Um, it will be in the description below. All right, so let's kick it off. Um, so please note, I mean, it's kind of a, a standard. I do this also in my classes. Um, so typically, you know, if, if anything, just round to three significant figures. That's what we'll do. Um, and try not to round in intermediate um, steps, okay, if possible. Now, your teachers might tell you something different. So obviously, abide to that. All right, so for multiple choice, so for question number one, um, which statement best captures voltage? All right, well, so thinking back uh, of voltage, so if you remember what that might be, so it is related towards uh, potential. Now it is potential with respect to charges um, that you have. So, you know, if you're talking about electric circuits, so it's going to be in the electrical side. So what is the potential difference okay, in terms of energies that you carry per charge? So that's kind of the idea. So um, it has nothing to do with gravitational. So I'll skip A, I'll skip B. Um, C, the potential electrical energy difference per unit mass. No, it's not per unit mass, it's per charge. Okay, so that's going to be D. All right, so that's this one right there. Question number two. So electric current, uh, so this is the action, the flow of charges that you have. Now, it's actually electrons that are flowing, okay, overall, but we do um, measure it with regards to charge. So it's charge per unit of time. So let's take a look here. Is the flow of protons, uh, is the flow of charge per unit time? All right, well, there you go. <laughs> okay, so that's the best one. Is the potential voltage, is the amount of time? All right, yeah, so that one is B. Let's take a look at three. When you multiply voltage and current, then what quantity results? So this is interesting because, you know, if you're doing this in grade 11, you may not be actually told this, but I think it's worthwhile. And this is my bias um, as I guess a former academic engineer. Okay. So what you have, um, I remember this uh, very vividly. So if you take voltage, I just want to show you what happens here. So if you take voltage, you know, if you recall, um, so voltage is the amount of energy that you have, right, uh, per charge. So that's going to be joules per coulomb. So I'm going to just look at units. Current, on the other hand, is uh, basically the amount of charge that is flowing per unit of time. So let's say this is all in metric standard units per second. Now, if you multiply these two, so if you take these, so joules per coulomb, you multiply. Notice what happens. I'm multiplying the quantities themselves. So multiplying these two, but I just want to illustrate to you through, you know, the power of units, what's going to happen overall so that the coulombs will cancel. And what you're going to get is you're going to get joules per second. Now you should be very familiar, you know, once you get into kind of electricity and circuits uh, with joules per second. So joules is obviously energy, you know, per second. So that means this actually is watts, right? So this is watts. So when you multiply voltage and current, uh, what you're going to get is power. So notice that's going to be D. And that's a pretty nice question. And it extrapolates on your learning in circuits. Number four, so the formula, so I is equal to VR um, represents, actually, I is equal to VR. Um, sorry, that made me smile. I, you know, I obviously came up with these. But this is, you know, V is equal to IR, not I is equal to VR. So don't get uh, tricked here. So it's not Ohm's law. It has nothing to do with the charge through a resistor. Okay, as you're going through energy current through a resistor. So this is actually none of the above. All right. So this is what you have. Okay, right there. So I is equal to VR. That's not really Ohm's law. So it's V is equal to IR, right? Number five, when you connect two resistors are in parallel, then the equivalent resistance is, all right, so this one is also a nice um, application of um, resistors in parallel. So you may recall um, that the equation, especially when you have two, that the 
equivalence is equal to resistor number one multiplied by resistor number two. So this is just from the formula and then you add them in the denominator. Now, when they are equal to each other, so this is gonna be R times R, which is R squared divided by R plus R, which is two R. So notice the R cancels one of these and you're gonna get R over two. So that's going to be R over two. So there you go. So that's the answer right there. Number six, KCL, so which is Kirchhoff's current law, is based on, so this is uh, interesting, so remember that if you have a node and you have currents which are coming in, you know, currents coming out, etc. So all of these currents, what we have, what we know is that the summation of all of the currents is equal to zero, right? So, um, you know, when the currents are flowing in and current is just charge over time, so really it's the charge that is coming in and coming out, has to be conserved, right? So Kirchhoff's current law is actually conservation of charge. That's what you would have right there, all right? Um, number seven, by convention, we draw the current flowing from the positive to the negative terminal, so that's correct. Um, you know, if you go all the way, okay, so if you go back to Benjamin Franklin, um, so yes, indeed, you know, you kind of are going through, so they thought that it was just kind of the positives, by convention, they thought the positives were flowing, right? Later on, we found out that it's actually the electrons and electrons are negative, so those are the ones that are flowing. So the current, by convention, uh, for historical purposes, also for some practical purposes as well, is uh, shown going from the positive to the negative terminal. Um, however, okay, electrons actually flow in the opposite direction. Actually, that is true, all right? So there you go. So electrons are actually flowing in the opposite direction, right? They go from negative to positives. Um, what else did they put there? Electrons actually do not flow. Well, we don't actually know where the electrons are flowing. Well, now we do. The electrons change their direction uh, of flow in the direct current. No, in the direct current, they do not. Now, if you study um, uh, alternating currents, which is AC, you know, yes, indeed, you know, they kind of flow back and forth. So this one is A. All right, so that's multiple choice. Thumbs up, you know, I wonder how you did. You can put up a comment down below. So these are some pretty nice, interesting questions that you had. All right, so here, okay, so let's continue. Solve each of the following uh, equations. All right, so well, let's get started. So this is question number one. Um, so 12 volt battery dispatches a certain amount of energy, then what was the amount of charge carrying this energy? All right, well, so this goes back in. So we know what the voltage drop is. You know, sometimes you might write it like this. So that's 12 volts over the battery. We know what the change in energy is, which is, I'm gonna put this in metric standard here in joules. So from milli back to joules. And then we want to be able to find out what is the charge, right? So for the charge, we have no idea. However, we know that this is the change of energy over okay, the charge. So we can certainly plug all of this back in and isolate for charge. So this is gonna be 12 is equal to so 2.56 Q. Um, so Q is just gonna be 2.56 divided by 12. All right, so let's do that. 2.56 divided by 12 equals, so charge okay, to three significant figures is gonna be 0 0.213 coulombs. All right, so that's for part A. Part B, it is observed that 15 milliamps, so this is B, uh, so 15 milliamps, that's our current, so again, I mean, I can put this into metric standard, so let's change it to amps. Has passed through a device in two minutes, so that's the change in time, two minutes. So again, metric standard, 120 seconds, 60 minutes per minute, 60 seconds per minute. And what amount of charge has flown through? All right, well, this is just going into so I is equal to the amount of charge that you have that passes over a certain amount of time, right? So here you can substitute all of this back in, um, is equal to, so that's 120, and you can solve for the charge in here, which is gonna be the multiplication of the two. So 0 
multiplied by 120 equals, so this is Q, okay, is equal to 1.8 coulombs. All right, so it's quite a bit here, all right, in terms of charge. Um, if you wanted to three sig figs, you can add a zero there at the end, so which would have been 1.80 coulombs. All right, so for C, that's the last one, in a DC circuit uh, where the voltage drop is 15 volts and the current is observed to flow at 30 milliamps, what is the resistance? All right, well, this is just Ohm's law. So V is equal to IR. And if you know, so that this is 15 volts, um, this, so my current is 30. So I'm gonna again change this back in Okay, so this is 0 0.03 amps, and then we wanna know our resistance. Okay, so our resistance R okay, is going to be equal to, well, we're gonna take our 15, and we're gonna divide. So this is gonna be 500 ohms. Okay, so if you wanna put this into three significant figures, you can put it in scientific notation if you wanted to. So for those who are interested, all right, so it's going to be this. Um, probably maybe unnecessary for this question, but there you have it. All right, so that's what we have for question number one. Here's question number two. So here they give us a graph. And for a given circuit, the following relationship has been observed between V versus I. All right, so our voltage and currents. Well, so this is nothing else but gonna be something to do with Ohm's law. Let's take a look here, what they ask. Part A, what is the slope um, of the graph? And what does this slope represent for the circuit? All right, well, so first of all, the slope will represent your resistance, right, that you have, okay, for this case. So notice it's linear, okay, within here, and that can be assumed as long as kind of the temperatures don't change too much in a circuit. What is the actual slope? All right, well, we're gonna have to find out what the slope is now, so don't forget, so slope, which I'm gonna just write slope here. So which is the change in Y divided by the change in X, right? So that's what the slope is. But of course, we are referring to here, so this is gonna be the resistance, which is gonna be the change in V, right, over the change in um, I. Right, so that's what you have right there, and this is related back to you know. So, if you think back of Ohm's law, which is V is equal to IR, of course, if you isolate this for R, you are indeed going to get V over I, right? Which is exactly what we see here. So, now how would you find it? Well, finding the slope, you can pick any two points. I'm going to just do this purely for convenience, right? So, in terms of convenience, I'm going to start from zero right here, and I'm going to try to see. And this is what typically, if if the if a grid is given, okay, well, there we go. So, okay, it passes through this point, right? So I can now find the slope. So I can find my rise. Um, I know what my run is, right? So I know my slope. So this particular slope, so that it looks like it goes up by five volts, right? So from five to zero divided by, and the time, so the change in time is zero point, is this in amps? Yes. This sort of change in time. Change in current, 0 0.04 amps, and that indeed is resistance, right? So five, you know, you can divide it by 0 0.04 and you'll get your resistance. So 125 ohms. That is your resistance and your slope, all right? You don't have to pick these two points. You can pick any points. Just pick a point that, you know, crosses, so like, don't pick a point which is like here, uh, whoops, okay? Um, you know, somewhere here or here where it's difficult to actually approximate. Just make sure that you pick one. Where's the, okay, this is another good one. It goes right through there, but the rest of them are actually not that good. So that's just a hint for you if you're ever run into something like this. So if a voltage of the circuit was increased to a value of 120, now, obviously 120, that's way off the chart because it only goes up to about 15, eh? 15 volts there. So we have to extrapolate, then what would the current become? Well, so for B, this is actually not that hard. 
v is equal to i r, which means that, of course, i is equal to v over r. Now, because we have already found what r is, and they're telling us that v is 120, all right, so we can take v, take our r, divide the two, and we'll, we'll know exactly, so this is, this becomes, so within here, uh, 0 0.96 amps. All right, so there you have it. That's your current. Um, and note, okay, so this was actually designed, so when I was designing this on Desmos, I always love that particular tool. Okay, so within here, and I put a little footnote for this question. So that's it. That's, that's all that you would do for this example. All right, so question number three. So we want to be able to solve for all the currents and voltages across all the devices, right? Using KVL, KCL, and Ohm's law. So it seems like a, a little complicated circuit here, but let's take a look and try to break it down. So what do we know about all of these three? So one, two, and three. All right. So if we have resistors everywhere, then typically we can do quite a bit in order to be able to solve. Um, so set things up and because we know Ohm's law, so they can create relationships. Now, in this case, we have, it looks like a bulb. Um, we have no idea what this device is. Uh, and because of these two, you know, we can't really set things up in terms of resistors, but we can um, use the given information. So notice there's 10 milliamps there telling us that it's going through this resistor. And then there is 15 milliamps flowing through here. Okay, so getting out of this battery and moving forward all the way around. All right, so uh, I will do the following. The first thing that I'll try to do in here is what is very easy for me to do, and that is find out what the voltage is across through here, uh, because I know what the resistor is, and I also know what the current is. So V is equal to just IR, that's Ohm's law. So when I multiply those two, I'm gonna get 10 volts. You can certainly use a calculator if you need to. So that's the first thing, right? So the multiplication there. Now, as soon as I have that, um, I can actually, I'm just kind of peeking. All right, well, I know the voltage here and I know the voltage here. So the, I just don't know what the voltage here is across. Well, let me just make an assumption. So I'm gonna assume, let's make an assumption like this. Let's call this V bulb B. And I'm gonna use KVL, all right? So KVL meaning, so I have a loop in here. So let's close that loop in. So that means I have six volts is gonna be equivalent to VB plus 10 volts um, across there. So that means that VB is, oh, it's actually negative. All right, so well, negative, so that means, let me switch this around so that it's going in the opposite direction. And that's kind of the beauty, right? When you get it wrong, um, so it's actually in this direction. <clears throat> so that's four volts, okay, across that. Now, if I know that that is four volts, then I also know that the voltage across here must be four volts because of the fact uh, that these are in parallel, right? So here's the node and then they're just attached, okay, within here, so these are parallel and voltages across parallel devices are gonna be identical. So if I know that, so now I can figure out what the current is, so within there, so again, so using V is equal to IR, so V is four volts, uh, R is one K. So that's gonna be four milliamps. And that four milliamps, all right, so it's flowing in this direction. So that's four milliamps right there. You can um, use the calculator again if you need. So four divided by one K. So now that I have that, let's see what else I can muster in here. Um, so I'm just peeking around. Oh, okay, so I, actually into this node, so notice into this node, so I have 10 milliamps, 15 milliamps, so that means I also will know what this current is, right? And so that's using KCL, so at that particular node, so let me do that in blue, so that is, so 10 milliamps is coming into that node, um, okay, so I guess this one, that's actually gonna be flowing into this battery, so I'm charging it up, so that's gonna be the current because, so you have, this is supposed to be equal to 15, right? Which is coming out from right here. 
So that means 15 has to be coming in, right? So that means plus I, so coming in, coming out. So I is actually gonna be five milliamps. So that's five milliamps going here. So that's five milliamps coming out here, which also means uh, that I can figure this out. So at this node, so five milliamps coming out, four milliamps going in, okay, so that right away, okay, tells me that that means that this current actually has to be flowing into here, and that's gonna be one milliamp. And why is that? Well, so again, so that's five milliamps coming out has to be equal to four milliamps plus that current, right? So if you bring over this on the other side, you're gonna get one milliamp. And so therefore that is this current flowing in this direction. That's through KCL. So now I have all the currents. Let me just double check here. We can do a check actually at this node. If you take this node, let's take a look and see. So you have four amps coming out, one amp coming out, 10 amps coming out. So that's four plus one, that's 15 amps coming out, okay, as you're going in. And you have this 15 milliamps going in. So 15 coming out, 15 going in. All right, so that's a check. So that works out fine. Um, so that gives us all the voltages, all the currents. Oh, I guess we still need, we still need this voltage across here. Okay, so that's V over this unknown. Um, and that can be done through, so if you're going all the way around, so KVL in here, so you have, so once again, so 10 volts, it's gonna be V, plus 10 volts is gonna be equal to 15 volts of that battery, um, which just means it's five volts. So this is five volts right there. And that's all the currents. That actually solves the entire thing. This is a, a great example to be able to test yourself to see, you know, how well do you um, remember these KVL, KCL, and Ohm's law. All right, so that's, Example number three. Here's number four, uh, so this looks complicated. So we want to know what the equivalent resistance for this circuit is, so let's take a look. Now this is all resistors. Now by the way, you know, I use the tool in here, I put a footnote, okay, so you know, huge props. So this is the circuitdiagram.org editor. Uh, it is actually free, so you can go, go on and create these things on your own uh, if you wanted to, and it, nicely lays things out. Now, one thing which I would want to point out is on this circuit, so for those students who may want to know, is that, so here's a battery, so this is a symbol for battery. Now, very often these symbols for batteries, you know, might just be simply, okay, something like this. If you stack two batteries together, right, so if you, you know, then you do it like this, and you keep, you can keep going. So here they just showed two stacked together. But there's another symbol in here, uh, which is this one, and this is the ground or the earth. So the electrons, you know, coming in or coming out um, are typically what we call grounded in circuits right in, and this is the symbol for it. So don't confuse it uh, with a battery symbol, okay? So it has a, a very long, okay? So it has a long and then a shorter one and then a little shorter one. So that just means that it's grounded. And this typically means that the voltage potential here is actually zero, right? So at the ground. So it gives you a nice reference point so that you can find out. So that means this entire node is basically at zero and you can find out all of the uh, voltages if you're looking for that. Not that this asks for it, but I think it's worthwhile mentioning. So they want the equivalent resistance. All right, so for the equivalent resistance, we gotta have to use parallel and series and so on. So let's take a look okay, and break this down. I'm gonna try um, to see. So I, I notice, well, right away, so these two are in parallel right there. So now, uh, because these two are in parallel, so and they're identical, so five kilo ohms, five kilo ohms, so that means in order to find this, well, so when they're identical, it's just R over two, so this is gonna be 2.5 K, so that's that. So that would replace that entire thing. And now notice that if you take the 2.5 and with this, it's gonna be in series. So that's gonna be 10K. Uh, so right away, so what this is gonna look like is when you add these two, it's gonna be 10K ohms. 
um, and then it leaves you the other 10k so now notice that these two are going to be in parallel all right that's with this one right there so that's another 10k and again so from here because these are in parallel so and they're identical so it's just r over 2 which is very easy so that's 5k ohms all right and so from that now so it carries forward so it has the other 5k okay in here so it carries in and now from here you will have the 5k and the 5k in parallel so add it together you're back to 10k so here you're back to 10k okay so that's what you're going to be faced with over here and now if you, as you keep cruising in here so you have another 10k <laughs> all right so this is another 10k so this one is not bad at all all right so you have and this is going to be five volts all right so over here so that means this is in parallel again so this is going to be 5k all right and that would have been your equivalent resistance so that's just walking through this whole thing so again notice these two are in parallel so that means you can take the two divided by two that just comes from the equation then so this one and this one are in series so you can add them together you'll get 5k plus sorry 7.5k and 2.5k which is now 10k so that's this one that would represent this entire thing right so that's the 10k and then you have this in parallel with this right so again these are identical so that's 5k so now this whole thing right right here is 5k now you have it in series with this all right so now you're getting 10k back so that's that that's all of this that's 10k right there and then you have another 10k over here and then you can do your equivalent resistance that's it all right okay so that's the answer to this one so that was a, a good one all right so here is the last example solve for all the voltages oh no and currents across all the resistors all right okay let's go back um okay so well i mean i guess it's not going to be that bad so first of all so you have 5k and your equivalent resistance is 5k all right so that's what you have in here so that means you can find out what the current is okay so flowing out of this battery so that means this current right here okay so that current so we can find that first all right so that's just v is equal to ir which just means v divided by 5k um, so as you have it so this is 5 volts divided by 5 so that equals to 1 so that's 1 milliamp coming out all right so that's 1 milliamp 1 milliamp driving out of here okay now that 1 milliamp is going to get split in um, now first notice that this is plus minus so this voltage okay is going to be the same voltage as you have over here so that's five five volts this is going to be five volts because these are in parallel so that voltage is easy to find out all right okay so within there we know that this is five volts and therefore if we know that this is five volts we also know what the current going into here is right so that's going to be five divided by ten right <clears throat> so that's going to be so within there um so as you're going through so that's a half a milliamp so this is going to be 0 0.5 milliamps drawn into here and so if you think back into here so that means if this is at 0 0.5 milliamps notice it has exactly the same um right re, uh, resistance over here so that's 10k so we know that the current going into here is 0 0.5 milliamps from kirchhoff's loss all right so so far okay we have quite a bit of information so this is going to be 0 0.5 okay i'm going to drop the milliamps there and with that um i guess you know so as you're going through so that's that that's five voltage across there now that 0 0.5 we can now find out what the voltage is across through here we know the current okay we know that um, 0 0.5 times 5 
So it's going to be what 2.5, right? So this is milliamp and kilo ohm. Okay, so here you know, just okay. So 0 .0 0.0.5 is 0. You know, 0, 0.005. Uh, sorry, that would have been 0, 0.5. Okay, times the 5k. So I just want to show you. Okay, so that's the 2.5 volts. That's going to be across through here. That's 2.5 volts. Okay, so that's what you have right there. That's the drop across that one. All right, so now I know what the current, okay, so going in, and now we're gonna, you know, play the game. So this is what we have so far. So right now, okay, we're right here, right? So this is the 5K, that's the 5K, okay? Um, notice now you have the 10K, so that's this 10K, and then you have this equivalent 10K over here, right? So that's what you're facing. So we can actually uh, find out in here. So as you're going through here, I'm going to use this okay, as my equivalence. So notice if this is 10K and this is 10K, so that means this current right here, it's going to be split into um, two, okay? Because these two have exactly the same resistance. So that means that current is going to be identical, right? So the current is going to go into both because they're equal to the same resistance. So if you have a 0 0.5 amps, okay, so if this is 0 0.5 going in this direction, uh, sorry, milliamps, so that means this okay, current and this current has to add up to that. Um, and because the resistance is the same, so this is really 0 0.25 and this is 0 0.25. All right. Now, 0 0.25, that means we can find out what the voltage is across through here. Um, so if you know the current, right? Okay, so times 10K, so within here. Uh, so that's going to be another 2.5 volts, right? Now, this shouldn't surprise you because notice if you do okay, a loop okay, within here, right? Or even better, if you do a closed loop around here, you notice that you have five volts, you have a drop of 2.5. So this has to be 2.5 as well, just by KVL. Or as we just did, which is 10K multiplied by 0 0.25. So you know that this is 2.5 volts. And with that, so as you're going through, so that means this is gonna be 2.5 volts, right? So this is plus minus, that's 2.5 volts Okay, that's going through that. All right, so now in terms of the um, overall current, okay, so this current going into here, so current going in this direction, we said was 0 0.25. Okay, so this is 0 0.25 milliamps, okay, going in. And again, notice how it is splitting. Right, so it's splitting and it's going to go into here um, and into here. The resistors are the same, right, across that. So it's again very easy to find out. So the current will split in half as you're going through. So this is going to be 0 0.125 milliamps, and this is 0 0.125. And what happens right here? It just continues on, which is going to be, it's going to join back up to 0 0.25 milliamps. Okay, so we have all the currents through here, and that's the same current that passes, okay, so through that. And if you know the current um, and you know the actual resistance, okay, so then again, you can use Ohm's law, okay, so within here. So V is equal to IR as you're going through. Um, so we want to be able to solve, so just multiply these two, okay, so that's 0 0.25 times 7.5, you can put that in, and this is gonna have, so plus minus um, 1.875 right there. Okay, so that's what you're going through there. And if you wanna know the voltage drops across through here, well, so 0 0.125 times five is 0 0.625 volts. So it becomes, um, you know, I mean, if you had to do this, okay, so you obviously would have to kind of clean it up all the way across, 
uh, so your teachers could see this, but I wanted to give you and show you a solution how you can approach. And that actually solves everything. Now notice um, the, the voltages so as you're going through. So notice this plus this, okay, what is that gonna equal to? Um, it's gonna equal to 2.5 volts, which is exactly what we said, right, across through here. So you have 2.5 volts and then 2.5 volts in here. So that's what you had, okay, sorry, 2.5 volts through here, and then this entire thing is 2.5 volts, right? Because these two would have been in parallel, okay, as you're going through there. That is it, all right? Okay, so this was a, a great test, okay? And you can let me know what you think, uh, but that actually completes the entire thing. Thanks for watching. Happy studying.